Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if this is the first video of mine you're seeing, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I have a cat, Zeke, who likes to make vocal appearances in the background of my videos too. And here on my channel, I make a lot of commentary content about anti-MLM. I have a huge anti-MLM playlist you can check out if you'd like. And if you love this kind of content and you find yourself coming back to my videos time and time again, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and sticking around. We're creeping closer and closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers over here. That was my goal for 2023. I don't think we're gonna hit it, but it's it's totally fine. Maybe someday, but I'm glad that you're here in this little corner of the internet where we talk all things multi-level marketing companies. I put out a new video every single week, and this week I have another horror stories video for you. Viewers will send in their horrific or shocking, sometimes even lighthearted and funny stories of them and their interactions with MLM companies. I pick out a few and then we read and react to them together. I've got some great stories lined up for you, but before we read them, I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Paired. Paired is a relationship care app that offers daily questions, games, and quizzes that you complete with your partner. The app's mission is to improve the happiness of couples in relationships by prompting fun and meaningful conversations. The Paired app has been a part of mine and my husband's life for two years at this point. We love that there's so many features to play around with and how it keeps us communicating about a variety of topics. It's always new. It's always interesting. For example, we recently answered a question about what holiday event we're most looking forward to doing together this month. He answered that he's excited for our first Christmas morning as a family of three, and I responded that I'm so excited for the Pentatonix concert we're going to this week. And I would say this is a relatively lighthearted and fun question, but these questions and quizzes on the Paired app can get really deep sometimes. What worry tends to keep you up at night? Do you ever keep things to yourself because you don't want to burden your partner? How would you feel if your partner had a bank or savings account that they had kept secret? These are juicy questions, right? And there's some even juicier and spicier ones on there that are fun to explore too. And I appreciate these deep and sometimes challenging questions so much because it gives you and your partner that opportunity to discuss topics that you might not have otherwise thought about or initiated if it wasn't for the Paired app. One of my favorite aspects is that you can't see what your partner has responded until you have submitted your own answer. It kind of forces you to be really thoughtful and intentional with your answers without being influenced by what your partner says. The Paired app fosters communication, trust, and intimacy. It's like the ultimate relationship companion. And a Paired premium subscription would make a fantastic and unique gift for your partner this holiday season. If you would like to maintain and deepen your connection with your partner, you can visit my link in the description box below, and that's going to give you a seven day free trial plus 25% off paired premium. Thanks again to the paired app for your continued support of the channel. Now let's get into these horror stories. This story says, hi, Hannah, hope you're doing well. I found your channel a couple weeks ago and I've been binge watching every night before bed. I'd like to remain anonymous, please. I have a lot of experiences with MLMs from Mary Kay to Optavia and everything in between. Coming from Utah, what else could you expect? Anyway, I'd like to share just a few of the ones that have stood out to me. I'll start off with the worst. A few years ago, a hun, let's call her M, requested to follow me on Instagram. I didn't recognize the name, but I saw that we had a lot of followers in common. So not only did I accept the follow request, but I followed her back. Big mistake. It took all of an hour for me to get the DM that we all know was coming. M started off the message telling me how pretty I was and how I'd probably been told that a lot. Then she proceeded to tell me how I would be the quote, perfect girl to be a paid model for her business. That's an interesting approach. I'm wondering where this is going. Of course I was interested. No one had ever asked me to be a model before and I was cluelessly flattered. When I agreed, we exchanged phone numbers and she was immediately texting me. She explained that I would be promoting products and uploading lots of photos of myself. So far it sounded great. Okay, so she's saying that you're going to be a paid model and that you're going to be trying products and uploading pictures of yourself. But who is doing the paying? That's what I wanna know because this to me sounds like she's going to be hiring you and you're gonna be doing work for her and she's gonna be paying you to post. Because this is an MLM Horror Stories video, I have to assume that's not how it's gonna work out. I asked about the things that I would be promoting and she let me know that they were health and wellness products. Then she proceeded to ask what problems I had with my body and what insecurities I would like to fix. This was a bit odd to me since she was just telling me how pretty I was and now she was talking about my body insecurities. Nonetheless, I started to explain that I was actually looking to lose weight, which was music to her ears. She started telling me about lots of different products I could try that would help and sent photos of the products. That's when I realized this wasn't her business. She was a rep for It Works. 
At the time, I didn't really have any issues with MLMs because I was surrounded by them, so this whole situation didn't raise any red flags to me. Of course, I was bummed when I realized that I needed to buy products to be a model for her, but I did it anyway. (laughs) Okay, so not only is she not paying you to be a model, but now you are paying her, essentially. Not actually directly paying her, but you have to pay into this scheme to buy products to, I'm assuming, become some kind of like either loyalty customer or a rep yourself. And from there, you're job duties are going to be presented as you're going to be posting pictures of yourself using the products and you're going to be modeling your results. Oh my gosh, it's so sneaky because that's not what's going on at all. She's trying to get you to buy into this MLM opportunity and then just become a promoter of those products like everyone else. But she's saying that you're going to be a model. That is something I don't know that I've heard before or if I'd have, it's so, so rare. And it kind of has me wondering if this just pertains to companies like It Works where they're selling weight loss products or weight loss supplements, where ideally in their eyes, your results would be visual. In other words, you should be having before and after photos to post as your promotion of the products. So maybe that's where they're getting this whole idea that you're a model for it in a way that that term doesn't really apply to all MLM companies. So maybe that's why we don't see this recruitment strategy across the board. After I put in my first order, M immediately tasked me with finding other models. She told me to copy and paste the message she had sent me, send it separately to 20 people, take screenshots and send them to her. I felt bad honestly, because I had thought that I was special when she reached out to me. That's also kind of unique. I've never heard of an upline requesting that you prove to them that you're cold messaging people. Maybe that happens more commonly than I'm aware, but I think this is the first time I'm hearing about that. I didn't want to do it, but I felt like I had just trapped myself into the situation. So I started sending the messages. I tried to pick random followers that I wasn't too close with because it felt so awkward and I didn't want to try and pitch this opportunity to my friends. This is where I end up making the biggest mistake that I still regret to this day. Because I was just randomly picking followers to reach out to, I didn't realize when I messaged one of my high school acquaintances that had very publicly struggled with weight and self image. And I'm ashamed to say that I didn't even look at her profile before I sent her the message. So I didn't even know that she was the person I was talking to. She told me that she might be interested in being a model. I think that is seriously such a horrible way to advertise being a rep, but I digress. I was excited to have someone that was interested and immediately jumped into asking the same questions that I had been asked. I agree with you. That is a terrible way to try and get people into your pyramid scheme by telling them that they're going to be a paid model. I was literally asking this poor girl about her biggest insecurities and if she would like to try a freaking rap to shed some extra fat. And if you're not familiar with It Works or with their most popular product, they literally do sell these things called wraps where you just wrap it around different areas of your body, particularly your midsection, and you wear it for some amount of time. And then supposedly when you take it off, you've shed all this fat. I've always thought that maybe you do look like you've lost a little weight or like your skin is a little bit tighter in those areas because you just shrink wrapped them basically and like sweat a bunch. Maybe you look or feel a little bit thinner because you've lost some water weight. I don't actually know that for a fact. That's always just kind of been my interpretation of what these wraps are like. I really should do more of a deep dive into that product because I do believe people feel like they are seeing results with these products, but it's pretty hard for me to believe that it's fat loss. Nothing much came of it. She ended up ghosting me once I started to talk about pricing and how she wasn't going to get paid for free. (laughs) After I never got a response, I decided to unfollow because that's what M recommended. I was absolutely horrified when I went to her page and realized who I'd been trying to pitch weight loss products to. I felt like the worst person alive in that moment. I couldn't imagine how I must have made her feel knowing the struggle she faced. That's when I decided I didn't want to be a part of the company anymore. It had only been two days and I already felt so wrong about it all. So I quit and I haven't looked back since, thankfully. It looks like M is no longer with the company either, so good for her. Okay, my second story is also about an it works, hun. This girl, we can call her Little Miss Liar or L for short. Oh my god. Elle posted constantly on social media. And the thing was in every single post, she had a photo of herself relaxing and a caption about how nice it is to be able to work from anywhere and how she had so much time freedom because she didn't have to go into an office. She was always on about how she could just make money from her phone. I honestly at times felt jealous because she made it seem like she was always at the pool or on her couch relaxing. Well, it turned out that all this time freedom she had was a lie. 
See, I work for a large credit union and we have lots of branches and offices in my area. I work on the back end and I fix errors that tellers and loan officers happen to make. Well, one day a teller error came through that I had to adjust. And when I went to reach out to the teller that did this, it was none other than L, the hun who was constantly talking about never having to go into an office and always being able to work from her phone. I just had to laugh. So wait, this it works rep who keeps talking about how she can work from anywhere and how she doesn't have to go into a real job actually works for the same credit union you work for. I mean, that's just a bold faced lie then, right? Claiming that you have all this time freedom and flexibility that you don't even have. I think this happens so, so often when people in MLMs post on social media, it's almost like they're trying to post about the life that they are wishing to have more in like an aspirational context versus what's actually going on in reality for them. Because after all, what you're posting on social media is supposed to be enticing enough for people to want to inquire about your opportunity and to join you. So that makes sense that you wouldn't say, oh, I'm still working my nine to five job. I'm just doing this on the side because that's not totally desirable. So instead we're gonna say, look at what it works allows me to do. I can work my biz from anywhere. I have so much time freedom. I don't have to go into the office. Yeah, okay, for your it works job maybe, <laughs> but what's paying the bills? You're nine to five at the credit union. There's just so many lies or half truths posted by people in MLMs that it's hard to take what they're saying seriously sometimes. This third one makes me kind of sad and I have mixed feelings about the situation, honestly, but I'll explain. My neighbor used to sell LuLaRoe. Her whole basement was filled with dresses and leggings and I mean filled. She did pretty well in the company. Utah has a very religious demographic and so she was able to sell a lot of the dresses because women like to have a casual comfy dress for church. She was always kind and friendly with my family. So when a close family member of mine became sick and needed a very expensive surgery that insurance wouldn't cover, she decided to try and raise money to help. I don't know exactly how she did it, but she was able to do a fundraiser with LuLaRoe. For every sale she made, LuLaRoe would match that amount to donate for my family member's surgery. They ended up providing a lot of money, which was great. And I'm so happy my family member is now doing well post-surgery. However, I can't help but think how so many reps struggled financially, which kept the company afloat. So while they helped us, it was at a cost of so many others that they were seeing no return on their own hard work. And it just feels so wrong because if there were a low ranking rep that needed an expensive surgery, I can almost guarantee LuLaRoe wouldn't have done the same and it breaks my heart. Anyway, I have a lot of other stories that maybe I'll send in sometime, but my fingers are tired and it's midnight, so I'm not about to do that right now. Say hello to the cats for me. Well, Zeke has been saying hello to you throughout your entire story. Yes, you have, haven't you? <laughs> Your last story here about the LuLaRoe fundraiser thing, it's kind of confusing to me because I've never heard of an MLM company themselves like stepping in to help out the friend of somebody in their company. I don't know how that all worked out. What I see more commonly are the reps themselves setting up a fundraiser where they will say, okay, if you come and buy my product from me, then I'm gonna donate a portion of the proceeds or I'm gonna match that amount or whatever, and then I'm gonna give it to this cause. And to me, that's always felt like a very self-serving act because what they're trying to do is get their sales numbers up for that month and try and hit ranks and get bonuses. And they're kind of using this cause as their platform to gather new customers to help them meet their goals. And yeah, they may follow through on their promise of donating towards that cause in the end, but it's still a really self-serving act. It's not completely charitable. There's definitely something in it for them. I don't have enough details here to kind of suss out what's really going on. When it all comes down to it, I'm glad that your family member's okay. And I'm glad that the surgery went well and that they had help with the expenses. But I'm always a little bit suspicious of where that money is coming from, especially when it has some kind of relation to an MLM. It feels like there's always some kind of catch. Somebody on the back end is benefiting from that. And it just makes me feel kind of gross. But like I said, I'm so happy that your family member is okay and will probably never know what went on behind the scenes of that fundraiser. Three excellent, very entertaining stories. Thanks for sending those in. This one says, hello, Hannah. My daughter brought your channel to my attention and we've been binge watching your MLM horror story videos all day, which inspired me to share my MLM story. Well, kind of. I don't know if my story is a horror story, but it may be interesting nonetheless. My name is Bruce and it's okay to use my name if you wish. My story begins back in the very early 2000s-ish when I was just getting back into the job market after a serious accident that kept me from working with multiple surgeries and therapy and trying to return to a normal life. 
My next door neighbor and friend knew that I was ready to get back to work and told me about a job opportunity. I was of course interested, but I was also nervous as well because I haven't been in the workforce for three years. And not to mention that I wasn't sure how my body would perform under the stress of normal work duties. Nonetheless, I went to the company the next day and I got the job. Yes, it was an actual job. I got hired to run the mail room of the now infamous New Vision, a vitamin supplement MLM company based in Arizona. My main task while in the mail room was to send out thousands of commission checks every week. To be clear, I was never a part of the MLM side of the business, so I don't know what the experiences were of the people on the MLM slash sales side. However, as an employee, if I wanted to get cheap vitamins, I had to become a member for $19 and they automatically placed me under the CEO's downline. I thought, wait, the CEO is part of the MLM? I don't know if that's ethical or if that's normal for an MLM type business. I don't know either. This is the first time that that is coming to my attention. I don't know if I've ever thought about the CEO being the tippy tippy top original person in the pyramid scheme before. I guess that would make perfect sense. (laughs) I always just thought they were kind of detached from the pyramid. Like there had to be the very first rep to ever join. And then they were the one that got all the people below them. And maybe that is the case for some companies, but it's sounding like in this case, the CEO is the OG person at the top of the pyramid. And if you're an actual employee in one of their offices and you want to buy the supplements, then you're going to get put in the CEO's downline. That's wild. Not long after working at the company, I read a brochure claiming how their mangosteen liquid vitamins cured one member's cancer. I thought, wow, can you make such a claim? And as I read further, it stated that, to the best of my recollection, a new vision member drank the mangosteen vitamins twice a day and his cancer was cured. Why doesn't the science community jump on this, right? I always think that to myself, and I even kind of made that point in my last MLM Top Fails video, where it's like, oh my gosh, if this company has the magical cure for this horrible thing, I can't believe that professionals haven't gotten their hands on it. I can't believe that it's not as widespread knowledge as it should be. (laughs) They're going to put healthcare professionals out of business with this kind of product, that kind of thing. It's just delusional. It doesn't make sense. The cure for cancer is not hiding within an MLM company. I promise you that. They also made promotional ads claiming that their vitamins were God's recipe. The ads promoted that their mangosteen vitamins actually cured ADD and ADHD, claiming that drugs are harmful to children and that they need to be taken off of Ritalin. Their vitamins were the cure that they needed. Note, this isn't the exact wording of the claim, but that was essentially the claim. I was obviously not buying it, but I worked in the mail room, not the legal department. I'm not sure how many parents were scared into these vitamins. These claims were what brought the many FTC lawsuits. Yeah, I can imagine that. Before I continue, people may wonder how I could work for an MLM company. The job was actually a great job. They were very great people to work with. I worked at many companies, but this job had the best friendliest people. Even the executives at the top were very friendly and approachable. I never heard of New Vision before I worked there, and when I was hired, I worked in the mailroom of a vitamin company. That's all I knew. I saw the commission check, so I thought that it was on the up and up. Signs started showing up only when I read the brochures and paid my $19 several months after I got the job so that I can buy the vitamins. I just want to say that no employee was forced to pay the $19. Only the employees that wanted the vitamins had to pay. Also, since it was a vitamin and wellness company, they promoted health. They had a really nice on-site exercise center. There were also other little perks, nothing special, but I was content with the job. And I also thought that it was good to feel appreciated as an employee. Even when I was a lowly employee, I didn't know that New Vision was going through serious FTC lawsuits. Remember, this was in a time when this kind of information wasn't publicly available on the internet, so the employees were not privy about the MLM part of the company. No conspiracies, no talk circling around the water cooler about the many lawsuits. In fact, now that I look back, the only person I know in the company that was directly involved with the MLM was the CEO. I know this because being in the mailroom, I saw his weekly commissions checks. More on that later. At one point, the CEO came to me and asked me to take down all of the new vision signs. You may ask what made me qualified to remove signs from a building. I worked in the mailroom, of course. I think I was overqualified. A few weeks later, I was asked to put up Vima signs. When I asked what Vima was, he just said that it stood for Vitamins, Essential Minerals, Mangosteen, Aloe. 
It wasn't until years later after the company got shut down in 2015 that I believe that the CEO changed the name because of the FTC lawsuits of New Vision. The FTC told them that they had to stop claiming that their vitamins cured cancer or ADD and ADHD, and they also had to fix their commission structure. They dropped the New Vision name and Vima was born. That is so interesting to me because I've not heard of New Vision. I have heard of Vima. So to know that they're one and the same is pretty crazy. And I think that your logic makes perfect sense that they have this really negative connotation with the previous name of New Vision. So we're just going to cut that out, rebrand to something totally different, maybe fix our pay structure a little bit to be more FTC compliant to get them off our backs and we're going to proceed with caution. Vima would not be the first or last MLM company to do such a thing. I left the company in 2006 and I ran into my friend that got me the job. He was still working there and I asked him how everyone was. He told me that the comptroller of the company, along with the vice president and with the vice president's children, whom also worked at the company, embezzled a lot of money. I don't know for sure how much, but my friend told me that they went to prison. So we're not talking about $100 here. I was shocked because I looked at these people as friends, but I guess the embezzlement was going on for years, even while I was there. I hear how people can never make money in an MLM. However, I can attest that this is not true. I was the guy in the mail room sending out the weekly checks to the members. Every week I would send out a stack of checks about two reams thick, so I know that people got paid. So who got paid? The CEO got paid millions, his wife made millions, his best friend made millions, and his wife made millions. All his other friends made hundreds of thousands of dollars every week. It literally paid to be his friend. I would say about 98 to 99% of the checks were for a measly $5 for the serfs. This was a joke to me because I'm sure it cost more to print those $5 checks, but let them eat cake. I can look back at my time with the company and I really enjoyed it. I see now how disconnected I was as an employee from the MLM side. I'm able to hear about the horror stories of the victims today from your channel. Even though I wasn't involved in the MLM side, it still hurts to know that the company I enjoyed working for hurt so many people around the world. If there is a glimmer of hope to the many victims of Vima in this story, it's when the FTC shut Vima down and the CEO was forced to pay $230 million. His friends also had to pay millions. They also got into legal issues in Italy and other European countries. If you found this story entertaining, I can also share my short job stay with an MLM 900 number company. It was the 90s and a total MLM scam. Better yet, how my friend and I really scared and shook up Tupperware's commission program. I have to say that our family is hooked on your videos. Well, I definitely enjoyed this story. So if you want to send in some follow-up stories about those things, totally go for it. I'd love to read them. And I'm always really appreciative for people in these really unique situations, such as being the guy in the mailroom sending out the commissions checks for an MLM company. That is such a cool perspective to have. I love that you took the time to write out your story and to share that with us. I think that's very valuable because you have that firsthand account of literally holding on to the checks that are going out to the reps of this company. And you know, for a fact, how much every single person was getting paid. And you can tell us that people at the top, in this case, the CEO, his wife, and his friends, they're all millionaires based on this scheme and everyone else is making pennies in comparison. You're holding the cold hard facts in your hands that this is a pyramid scheme. And I'm eating that up. I love that so much. Love to hear that Vima shut down. Love to hear that the CEO had to pay millions of dollars for that. Don't love to hear how many people were victimized by this scheme, but as you said, the silver lining is that it doesn't exist anymore today. Instead, the MLM industry lives on in the form of hundreds of other different companies that in my opinion are just waiting to be shut down. So thank you so much for sending in your story and for allowing me to share it here. It really is a testament to how much these things are pyramid schemes and hopefully getting this information out there prevents people from joining, maybe even get some people out with the ultimate goal being that if people stop engaging with these companies, then they fail to thrive and then they fail to exist. Thank you for your story. This was an excellent one. This next story, just a warning, is very, very, very long, which I think is great. And I'm just mentioning it right here because I'm probably gonna power read through this and not pause too much in between. All right, buckle up, here we go. This story says, hi, Hannah, my name is Hannah, and I've got two horror stories to share. 
I don't think they are as bad as some I've heard you read, but each experience has left me with long lasting feelings of discomfort and sadness. My first story happened nearly 10 years ago. I'm 32 now, so I was about 22 to 23 at the time. I was watching MLM Horror Stories number 18. I've been binging these stories in order like a podcast. And in it, one of the stories was about someone who joined Mary Kay and what happened to them. And it triggered this memory. That memory triggered more. I hope this email isn't super long, but I wanted to be detailed, but get everything in. It is super long, but I love the details. I think that's great. So no problem there. My first personal experiences with an MLM involves Mary Kay. Growing up, one of my grandmothers had friends in Mary Kay, but I was too young to understand what that was. I just knew one of her friends sold makeup. I was also never purchased any Mary Kay products as gifts by that grandmother, thankfully, as she felt that I didn't need grown up lady products being under the age of 12. I guess once I hit 12 to 13, I would have been eligible to use them in her eyes. So about 10 years ago, my best friend Erica was getting married. I was her maid of honor and I went with her on all kinds of wedding related things like buying decorations, looking at floral arrangements and dress shopping. Well, it was the dress shopping that got us roped into a Mary Kay pitch. We went to a dress shop and at the front entrance, they ask you to check in. We did, and while the girl at the front was taking Erica's info, she asked if Erica would like to sign up to win a free spa day with some friends. Oh my gosh, I know exactly where this is going. It was something the store was doing with a local spa for brides and their bridal parties. I know that the spa had a name, but I can't recall at this moment. We know now that it wasn't a spa, just a Mary Kay lady using a business name. Erica and I thought it sounded like fun, so she signed up and we didn't think anything about it again, figuring that so many brides come in here, there's no way we'll win. Until she got an email saying she won. Because of course she did. Everyone who signed up won. We know that now, but not then. I will interject right here really quickly that if you see any kind of giveaway entry or spa day entry box at local establishments, whether that be restaurants or bridal shops, nail salons, hair salons, whatever, please don't give them your info because there's a good chance that it's going to be an MLM rep. And you're exactly right that there are no winners. Everybody's a winner. It's just a ploy to gather your information and to trap you into a sales pitch, as I'm sure you're about to detail for us. Erica called me and read me the email with all the details of the spa night. Her and 10 friends were invited to a facial party where everyone was going to get a gift bag. There was going to be food and drinks, and it sounded like a great time. Erica and I didn't know 10 people, still don't. So she invited her two future sister-in-laws and of course me, but only one sister-in-law was able to come. Let's call her Julie. She doesn't know I'm writing this and I'm keeping her anonymous for her privacy. So on the night of the spa party, me, Erica, and Julie show up to this office building and go upstairs to what turns out to be a grubby conference room with folding chairs around one of those folding tables like you see in a craft room or a school cafeteria. Inside the room were a few really well-dressed women standing around talking. I asked Erica if we were at the right place and she told me, yeah, this is where the email said to go. Before things even got started, I was incredibly uncomfortable. For starters, the way the women were dressed made the three of us feel like we were super underdressed. We all just showed up in pants and t-shirts figuring a facial can get messy, so why wear something super nice? Next, it felt like they were about to have a meeting and we were interrupting everything and had arrived too early. Nope, we were right on time. And yes, they were about to have a meeting. We were greeted by an older woman who asked if we were it. Erica asked, what do you mean? The woman asked, well, it's just the three of you? Erica said yes, just as she'd stated in her reply email that there was only going to be three of us as she didn't have a large bridal party. She kind of did, but her family was coming from out of state, but it wasn't this lady's business. This started to make both myself and Erica feel awful. We are very introverted people and became friends in adulthood after we both struggled for years being friendless and quite lonely. We bonded at work where we met and ended up staying friends long after we left that job. This woman seemed really upset at Erica and even myself and Julie because she asked me and Julie if we knew more people to bring and if they'd like to come now. Julie said that she didn't know that that was an option and I said that Erica was my only friend. After what felt like an eternity of arguing about not having more people, the woman finally just huffed and said, okay, that's fine, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, what a weird attitude to be having with your guests that you are supposed to be giving a free facial to or a spa night or whatever this is. 
you would think that if you're walking into that setting, you would be greeted with open arms. Congratulations, you're the winners. Come on, come in, let's do this. This is gonna be such a nice, fun spa night for all of you. And instead, you're greeted with someone who seems to be very cold and almost offended that you didn't bring more people. And what we know now is she's probably irritated because this is a pitch. This is an evening that she is taking time out of her life to do. She has an ulterior motive to get you to buy stuff or to sign up for Mary Kay, and she doesn't want that to be wasted on only three people. I'm sure she was expecting and hoping that up to 10 people would come so that it would feel like it was worth it for her. But that's absolutely not your fault and not your responsibility to find 10 people to come to this thing, especially because you were under the impression that this is some kind of gift or reward, that you won this kind of raffle and now you're coming to redeem your prize. I'm sure from the get-go now, you're kind of realizing that it's not everything you thought it was going to be. There was a younger woman, turns out that she was the older woman's daughter, who told us they were going to have their weekly meeting before we got started with our facials. This was so weird to us. They were gonna have a company meeting while we sat there and watched? Yep. The older woman, who I now realize was the upline for the younger women, spoke first. She introduced herself, spoke about how long she'd been with Mary Kay, 25 years. I checked with Erica while writing this to fill in the blanks. What Mary Kay has done for her and her family, all the opportunities owning her own business has provided, and how the products have changed her life, and that she just loves her Cadillac. We then sat through over an hour of each person getting up and speaking, saying basically the same thing and how they aspire to get the Cadillac too. They also talked about their business achievements throughout the week and anything they were working on closing. After they all spoke, the older woman came back with recognition pins to be handed out to certain people in her group that had met certain goals. We were all encouraged to clap and cheer as this went on. Finally, this comes to an end and the older woman starts telling us that the stations in front of us were so that we could give ourselves the Mary Kay approved facial. We had bowls of water, towels, lotions and creams, and makeup in front of us. We were instructed to wash our faces using some of the creams and then moisturize with some of the lotions that I remember smelling pretty bad. The scrub they gave us to wash with burned my face a bit. And when I said, hey, I might be allergic to this, I was told that it was hypoallergenic and I must have scrubbed too hard. Classic, it's your own fault that you're having this bad reaction. Oh my gosh. Once this was over and we had scrubbed apparently incorrectly and moisturized, we were paired with one of the women who was going to hand pick makeup for us that would suit our complexion. I don't remember what Julie was given, but the girl I was paired with thought a steel gray eyeshadow and a blue-hued red lipstick along with the most bright pink blush was going to suit my face. She showed me the Mary Kay way and proceeded to show me that I was to apply the makeup incredibly heavy handedly. I looked like a cartoon wearing makeup. I had big circles of blush on my cheeks, squares of eyeshadow on my lids, and the lipstick just didn't match my skin tone. On top of it being dry and making me look like a suffering fish. <laughs> Oh, and the mascara must have been old or something. It was clumpy and dry, making it difficult to put on. I remember they told us this was like an everyday 10 minute makeup look. When I sat back to look at myself in the pocket sized mirror they provided, I nearly cried. <laughs> I couldn't believe this is what the girl thought I should look like. She must have seen my face because she started saying really loudly how pretty I looked and that I should go out for drinks after this because I was sure to get some guy's attention. Yes, of course, because we all wear makeup just for guy's attention. Oh my gosh. That makes me roll my eyes so hard. They're probably gonna fall out of my head. I just sat there and nodded, and when I wasn't as enthusiastic as her, she brought two other girls over to compliment me as well. They were saying the gray really suited my skin tone. I've got yellows in my skin tone, and gray is not a color I look nice in. And the bluish red lipstick perfectly offset the blush, things like that. I'd like to pause here and just mention that I'm not a thin person either, neither is Erica. Growing up bigger, we were both told to make our faces pretty to distract from our bodies. At this point in my life, during this Mary Kay party, I had been on basically a starvation diet and was working out constantly in the hope of shrinking myself. The girls running the Mary Kay pitch were all thin and probably never spent a day in their life being fat. So having someone say that this was flattering when I felt anything but, and it clearly wasn't, was hurtful. I don't think they meant it maliciously, but they clearly thought Mary Kay solved all their problems because Mary Kay had them brainwashed. And if Mary Kay could solve their problems, then Mary Kay could solve mine too and make me pretty. It was really hard not to cry and just smile and thank the girls. 
The girl kept saying what a pretty face I had and my hair was so gorgeous and men would love this look on me. I'd had enough of being told that we should go get ourselves some men or that Erica should go for one last guy before she gets married. Erica was marrying a woman. They are now divorced and thankfully so. This idea that women should be putting on makeup or doing their hair or making themselves look any type of way specifically for the male gaze really gets under my skin, as I'm sure it does for so many women out there. It's bizarre that that's a point that they continue to drive home. Think about how great men will think you look in this makeup. Ugh. Who cares what men think? Who cares what anyone else thinks? If you don't feel good in that makeup look, that's what matters the most. And I have also had the experience of having my hair done a specific way or having my makeup look a specific way and then seeing myself and just feeling like I want to shrink into a hole. Nothing takes your confidence away more than seeing someone you don't really recognize in the mirror and then having someone else telling you how great you look. Because ultimately it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And if you have someone constantly here in your ear trying to externally convince you that you look so great when you don't feel like that internally, it's just adding salt to the wound. I can only imagine how that made you feel. Terribly, probably. When I looked at Erica, she had clearly had enough as well. She had a pinched and frustrated look on her face and her makeup was also appalling. <laughs> I believe they gave her a blue shadow and everything else looked identical to mine. I started to gather my bag and my phone and get Erica and Julie moving along, saying, thank you, this was nice, but we had to go now. We were stopped and asked what we thought of the presentation and would we consider joining their team? And wouldn't it be great to build your own businesses and get a chance to work from home? There it is, the whole reason we're here tonight trying to get you to join Mary Kay. That is why this entire event exists. I wish I could remember how we got out of there, but we finally did. And the only person who got a gift was Erica and they gave her that terrible mascara. We hustled out of there and never heard anything from them again. And no, they never provided food and drinks either. Rude, they promised that. When I got home, I still lived with my mom and she asked me how it went. And when she finally saw my face, she gasped and asked what happened. I told her everything. My mom said that the eyeshadow was splotchy on my eyes and that this was all wrong for me. I told her how I wanted to cry over how they just kept saying I had a pretty face and that this was going to get me a husband. I do remember my mom laughed at this and said, honey, those Mary Kay ladies will say anything to make a buck. She assured me that I was beautiful without the makeup and that's when I started to cry. Oh my gosh. And oh my God, I wish I hadn't cried until I got the makeup off. My eyes immediately started to burn. Both of my whole eyes started to turn red and my mom hustled me to the bathroom to help me get the makeup off. We double cleansed my face and my mom put an ice pack on my eyes, but I still had this rash around my eyes for a few days after. I wasn't able to put on any of my normal makeup, which never made my skin break out until the rash went away. I have sensitive skin to begin with, and I always have an arsenal of creams and prescription things around, so thankfully I had the right stuff to help clear up my eyes. So I'm thinking one of two things happened. One, the makeup was trash quality and you didn't react well to it, and that could very well be the case. But there's also a second option that's probably more disgusting to think about, which is that they were doing your makeup with previously used products which would not be that far out of the realm of possibility considering how you got yourself into the situation, right? There was this raffle entry at this bridal shop where presumably every bride that's coming in there is putting in her information and everyone's getting a call and everyone's doing this exact same thing on different nights. So who's to say that that Mary Kay lady is not just using the same eyeshadow, same mascara, same foundation, whatever, on every single person? Yes, there are safe and sanitary ways to do that. Professional makeup artists do that all the time. Naturally, they're not gonna be buying new products for every single person. But do we trust these Mary Kay reps to do the safe and sanitary thing? I know I don't. I'm just imagining different women getting this makeup done every day of the week using the same exact eyeshadow palette or something thing. So nasty. So yeah, either you use the products and they didn't work for you and they didn't react well to your skin, or maybe these Mary Kay reps are just incredibly unhygienic and they're using the same stuff on everybody. We can only hope it was the first option. Erica and I hadn't thought about this in years until I found your channel and I called her to ask about this. We had a laugh going down memory lane with this one. A quick side note, Erica's other sister-in-law, the one who didn't come to the spa night, joined Arbonne a few years later and got Erica to buy the wellness and weight loss products. I was asked about it too, but was finally finding a place in life where I was eating better and learning to take better care of myself. Shakes and things didn't really seem like they would fit for me. 
Erica liked them and I didn't want to discourage her if she found something that worked for her weight loss wise, but she stopped getting things after the divorce proceeding started and realized that she was on a starvation diet using Arbonne. That same sister-in-law also joined Beachbody and other companies. You can probably see where this is going for her. We both no longer speak to her and that toxic part of our lives is over. My last MLM horror story involves Melaleuca, and yes, this is a much, much shorter story that you've added on here. To be brief, a few years ago, I started an Instagram page where I post about the books I'm reading and where I could join in the book community in the hopes of maybe making some more friends. I was super into posting and loved interacting with other accounts. One day, I received a message from a girl who asked me about a recent book I had posted. We chatted about this book for a bit and then got to talking about ourselves. We didn't live near each other, but it felt so nice to have found someone to chat with. Somehow the conversation started turning to more personal stuff and she was bringing up products that she used for her home and personal life. She started asking me about stuff I used and that she had an alternative product that was more holistic and natural. I'm into holistics and I love to use as many natural products on myself as possible, but I also understand that just because an ingredient is not one I can pronounce doesn't make it bad. And that sometimes we need a specific medicine to treat a specific thing for it to get better. After getting to know this girl for a few weeks, she started telling me more about her shop club and that I could find tons of items I could swap out for the things I already buy and I'd earn more points to buy more things. That sounded awesome because who doesn't love a rewards program? She finally told me it was called Melaleuca. I'd never heard of it and she provided me with her link. I thought it was like Amazon affiliate links, so I didn't think to ask many more questions. I went on, signed up, and started looking at the products. The prices were outrageous and I started wondering how the heck I'm going to afford this stuff. I picked out a few items and I ended up needing to put the order, which totaled $90 on my credit card. I knew as soon as I placed the order that I was not getting another one. I waited for my things to arrive and as soon as they did, I went on the website to cancel as Melaleuca now has my credit card info and would continue to ship me the same items every month even if I didn't want them. Well, you can't cancel Melaleuca by the website. You need to do so in writing. I had to print off a letter requesting to cancel, sign and date it, and get it in the mail by a certain post date so that they would cancel it obviously making it as difficult as humanly possible to get out of this thing. This is reminding me of the time that I wanted to report an Amari rep for these horrible claims that she was making about the product saying that they could treat her kids ADHD. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. I have a whole video about that on my channel if you wanna watch that. But I wanted to report her to the company and I thought that I could just send an email to the compliance department or something with some screenshots of all the things that she's saying. But no, you had to do exactly what you're explaining. You had to write a letter, send it via the United States Postal Service and just hope that it arrived to them. And I made the point in that video, and it also applies here, that they're doing everything they can to make this a multi-step process and make things as difficult for you as possible so that you just don't do it. Or at least it helps put it off a little bit longer. Like if you look into it and you think, oh, now I have to cancel this account, but in order to do that, I have to print out this letter and I have to mail it. Like I'm gonna wait and do that a different time versus just getting on the website and clicking a button. I can definitely see how for some people that task would just get put on the back burner and they would just continue to charge your account month after month. Very sneaky and very intentional. Not understanding that this is an MLM, I didn't think my friend would find out that I canceled. Well, the very next day she messaged me and asked, why did I cancel? <laughs> I told her that I can't afford to spend $90 every month on items that will take me longer than a month to use, but thanks for the opportunity to pick up a few bulk items I needed at the time. I got a shampoo, which was actually really nice and I miss using, a body balm for sore muscles, an after sun cream, not as good as the one in the yellow bottle from Clinique, an acne body wash and some popcorn, which was okay, but the bag was too small, like literally two handfuls of popcorn in this bag. She thankfully wasn't too upset by me canceling and didn't push me, but our conversations dropped off off a lot after that until it got to the point that we don't even talk now. I was so disappointed that it turned out I was really just another person she needed to keep her part of the up and down line going. I thought I was really making a friend. Since this has happened, I've been very hesitant to accept messages on my Instagram page and I've stopped reaching out to people as well. The times I do get a message or engage in conversations with people, I don't let them go on for too long for fear that I'm going to be recruited all over again and lose someone that feels like a friend. If you get to this email, thanks for sticking with me through all of this. I know it's long. It's been nice to get it out of my head and I hope someone who may have had similar experiences to mine maybe find some comfort like I have with other people's stories. Yeah, thank you so much for writing all of this out. It was incredibly long, but it was really detailed and it was great storytelling. So no issue there at all. 
I personally love the long stories. I think the more details, the better. And I can't say I blame you for being more hesitant and more on guard going forward when it comes to new people wanting to interact with you. It sucks. That's a huge bummer that that's kind of the world we're living in right now, where cold messaging from MLM reps is so prevalent that you have to be really cautious about who you're talking to and why they're interested in conversing. Because sadly, we have to be on the lookout for some kind of ulterior motive. I'm so appreciative for you writing in your stories for us. And with that, my friends, that's all the stories I have for you for today's horror stories video. I know we only got to three of them, but two of them had multiple stories in there. So I think that makes up for it. Usually I like to do at least five stories per video, but I think we have plenty of content in here and I really appreciate the writers of those stories. And with that being said, here is your reminder that if you have your own MLM story you would like to send in to me and have considered for a video, the instructions for how to do that are in the description box below. It's so easy. You just send me an email. And again, thanks to Paired for sponsoring today's video. While you're down there in the description box, you can click that link. That's going to give you a seven day free trial of Paired plus 25% off Paired Premium. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon. Oh, 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 oh,